worshipers, you may have your seats. All the, well, many, not all, many of the preachers who um, were accustomed to preaching short teased and would suggest that among the things that the COVID was allowed for us to teach us, couldn't preach short, like Sister Sylvia and Sister Cindy, to preach short. But bless the Lord, you know. So, <clears throat> glory to God. <laughs> All right. Saying so, as I mentioned that, um, Terry is not with us this morning. Terry was deployed this morning. He's in Speyside. He's in Speyside this morning. <clears throat> I think last week he was in Bell Garden, not sure. Yeah, but this morning he's Bell Garden or Speyside, one of the two. But bless the Lord. Remember, to, we continue to lift him up, our brother, as he is being deployed around for the glory of God until such time that the Lord settles where he will place him. All right, good. Turn with me to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 13. Um, before you, before, sis, bef before you all do that, put up the song. Let me treat with this while we look to and the song that, what name, Rhonda? The one. Who? You're too faithful. Yeah, from the first, that the first line there? Next line then. Right, there. I don't have my point up, but I need for us to understand. We could run with it, as I said, I love the song. But for those of us as adults, we must teach our children, even as they grasp it. That line, you're too faithful to disappoint me, must be taken with spiritual understanding. Because all of us at some point, in our journey with God, become disappointed. Um, case in point, death. None of us want our loved ones to die. I mean, <laughs> none of us want to die now, but when we die, we can't feel disappointed. And particularly, if you know Jesus, when you die, no matter how much you had loved life, you ain't won't come back. All right? You will run by God and say, Lord, give them grace. Right? But when you're alive and our loved ones die, particularly when in our minds this should not have happened, we cry out to God. And, right? So I just went to the most extremes. I need us to understand that when we sing that statement, you're too faithful to disappoint me, what we mean is God will not disappoint us by leading us wrong. God will not disappoint us by uh, 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 allowing that which he, do, you know I mean, allowing the devil to just have his wanton way and screw up our wills. Right now, the devil cannot screw up our purposes unless he gets our assistance. We are the devil's greatest ally. All right? So it's a lovely song, and I really want us to, I would love for us to love it. Uh, I would love, to, love for us to learn it. I give God so much praise um, for I am sure that Scutus is the one that brought that song to us, and I commend you so much. All right? Bless you. That's a little joke between me and the worshippers there. All right? Good. Bless the Lord. All right. Genesis 13, verses 1 through 12. And we want to talk today about establishing biblical kingdom culture. Establishing biblical kingdom culture. All right? Now, it's a, it's a couple of verses. It's 12 verses. So I'll read them, and you'll follow. I'm reading from the NKJV. And um, <clears throat> all right, then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. And Lot, that was his brother's son, went with him, and, and Lot with him to the south. Abram was rich, very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. 
And there, Abraham, Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also, who went with him, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them that they, may dwell, that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Light, Lot, Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. It is not the whole, is not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go toward Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. Father God, tonight, this morning, touch us, Lord, and touch me. Touch me as I share, God, what, oh God, you've deposited in my spirit, oh God. God, help me to be completely yielded to you. That you, O oh God, would touch your people with love. That you, O oh Lord, would touch your people, O oh God, with truth. That you, O oh God, would sustain us and refresh us with the truth of your word. May it find good ground in us today, we pray. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> amen. <clears throat> all right, so we're talking about establishing biblical kingdom culture, all right? So we have to kind of move real quick because it's just 36 minutes. I have more, 36 and a half, but the thing is, I want to begin by us understanding why it's important for us to keep the word biblical there. Establishing biblical kingdom culture. See, all of us, all of us have some form of culture. I will tell you that prior to coming to Tobago to live, I had come to Tobago several times. I felt that Trent and Tobago was, we had a culture. And maybe every little village, as was the case, I was even visible in Trinidad, would have little subcultures of sorts. All right? Uh, <clears throat> But in, in my looking on at it as a Trinidadian in Trinidad, it was easier for me to cite the, the subcultures, if I could call it that, according to the um, ethnic composition of the area. So you would expect, you know, hardcore East Indian areas to maybe enjoy a different type of breakfast. You know, little, little, little things that were very normal but when I came to the big, I discovered, it took me a while to discover, first of all, that many folk didn't see me as a child of God first. They saw me as a Trinidadian first. All right? All right? And that was real shocking to me, Elder Young. I, I, I mean, I, that, it took me a real while to learn that. Okay? And I tried to embrace it when I discovered it. And to show that it was no offenses, I came up here and I said, I'm called to just come. Because I'd learned that's what it's called. And in so doing, I offended some folk. And they come and tell me, don't ever say that again. So Lord help me. The pastor offended the brethren when all he was trying to do was say, listen, I know my place. Right? So there are little cultural norms. The challenge is when the national culture trickles into the kingdom and overpowers the strength that we allow the Holy Ghost. Please follow me. The Holy Ghost is strong, but the Holy Ghost don't force. So when national culture trickles in and begins to overpower our yieldedness, overpower what, we, what God wants to do in our lives, then it becomes dangerous. Then it becomes dangerous. And, I mean, we had a tremendous three nights and I don't, I don't want to do like the bishop and ask those of us who wasn't here and then say, where were you? But, I mean, we had a tremendous three nights. And 
um, it, it was so, so clear that God was speaking to us directly, which is what had to shape as I approached this study, because I said, Lord God, help me to love your people. Because what has happened, and the members of the church board can attest to this, is that because I recognize that, coupled with the fact that I understand that in the PAWI, the, the, you don't just come in and pull pastoral rank, no matter what church you're going. You allow folk to learn you, learn to folk, allow people to discover what you're about, and you try to work with them and, and encourage them to discover where God has placed you to steer the ship as I get directions from God. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. All right? And the thing is, uh, as we've done that, the board could attest that, and you would hear me say, What we're talking about there is the, the way we're viewed. It is actually some of our cultural and subcultural positions that can really now stand as a block to what God wants us to do. Like, for instance, again, many of you, if you pay attention, you would have heard me said, some of us, we will die like the thief on the cross. Just say. Now, imagine Pastor Guevara saying that in 2018. Pressure. You getting, you getting the imagery I'm trying to create here? How, because we, we, we hold a position, it makes even the reception of the word more difficult because how we see what we're hearing. So today, we want to look in to establish biblical kingdom culture. All right? And we are acknowledging, even as we begin, what we want to do is push the Bible to the front. Present ourselves on the altar of sacrifice and say, God, I am kingdom first. I'm kingdom before I am Trinidadian. I am kingdom before I am Tobagoonian. That's the reality of it. All right? Now... Look at in verse 1 to 4. Then Abram went up from Egypt, and he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot were hand with him. The first thing, maintain a willing heart. Maintain a willing heart. To what? S, S, and W. To serve, to sacrifice, and to worship. We're going quickly. Maintain a willing heart. To serve, to sacrifice, and to worship. Hmm? Some of us as individuals struggle to take instructions because the whole idea, who is he or who is she, right? I've seen, I've seen church boards. Please note, please note, brethren, that I served as a district officer before coming to Tobago, right? So my references are not in the now. But God made something very, very clear over those three nights, all right? It's time for us to really get it together. Embrace the culture and love the people, learn, learn the people, lead the people, teach and pray. All right? I've said that over and over again. That's my capsulized mandate. All right? And we are going, we're all of us as the kingdom now, in truly uncharted territory because of this pandemic, because of the restrictions and because of the norms that have now become normal that even after vaccine will continue. All right? Now, so, maintain a willing heart to serve, to sacrifice, and to worship. Now, the Bible says, um, from verse 2, Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. 
And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning. Between Bethel and Ai. In other words, brethren, Abram had already passed there. That was since in chapter 12. Now for us, it is just move from one chapter to the next. But for Abram, it was hundreds of miles over a significant period of time. He had to journey into Egypt, nearly got into all sorts of trouble there, had to be rebuked by a pagan king, and then journeyed back. When he was first leaving, he had set up the altar because that heart to sacrifice before the Lord and to worship God was there. And he had gone, faced all this drama in Egypt, and had to come back again. And as he's passing back, if the Bible is able to say, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, in the region between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which, had, which he had made there at first. And there, Abram called on the name of the Lord. And sometimes... Sometimes in our desire to deal with stuff, in our desire to run from bad situations, we find ourselves like that. All right? He, 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 there was this famine. He went down into Egypt and he lied to the king. Fed his wife as a sister. We know the story. We are trying to move fast. The clock moving a little faster. What happened? The king recognized it and said, come on, man. what's wrong with you? And he rebuked him. Now, God was able to preserve in the midst of it. And what happened? Abram had to go right back. And he did the right thing. Went right back to the altar, to the place of communion. And some of us, brethren, that's the reality is. We need to go back to a place of communion. We need to go back to a place where we could indeed maintain a willing heart to serve, to sacrifice, and to worship. That's the representation of the altar right there. Abram's whole life, right? His whole life's journey was in service to God. Remember when he left Ur of the Chaldees and he, and he moved up further. God showed up and said, leave your kinsman, leave, leave, leave your kinsman and your country and go to a land that I will show you. His entire life's journey from that point, was in service to God. And that's a real reality. Do you have any idea? And again, it's safer when you're talking about people in this case to, 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 to use me. Do you have any idea what a pastor goes through? In this case, I could talk about me. When God shows up, he says, David, here, what's going on? You are the move. My first words to God again? Because I'd already gotten up. The temptation is to say, God, I've done my time. My son was a baby, a baby, when you called me to Dominica. My son took his first steps here in Trinidad, and before he could run, we were living in Dominica. And I spent four years there at the command of the Lord. Came back, worked God, did all sorts of miracles, took me through a journey, took Cindy through a journey, took us all. And God miraculously gave us our home. Gave us the means to purchase our home. Bless the Lord. In whatever year, 2000 or whatever it was. The year 2000. And now you want to show up and say, leave? What's the normal thing you want to do? Normal thing you want to do is call and find out what, where, who, how much, all kind of questions. Reverend Roberts may or may not remember. But not until after my interview and after the election, when I became the pastor-elect, did I call her. And I called her to say, Rev, the church own a house. How, how many rooms it have? Because I don't know. And why I didn't know, I could have asked before. But I don't want to know what I need to know. Not that I don't want to know in my human flesh, you know. But I want to maintain this willing heart. So what ain't going to help me? I don't need to know. Y'all getting me? This is real stuff. This is real stuff. 
And that's the thing. Sometimes God clears our plate and allows us an opportunity to serve. You know what we do? We fill it with something else. Workaholic kingdom. You know, and some of us here have called workaholics. Oh my God, I'm not throwing words to you all. All right, bless the Lord. Amen. All right, good. Glory to God. Right? Some. Right? Thank God those that have called workaholics have. They work hard, 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 hard in the kingdom also, right? But, you know, you're trying to say, you know, God, clear your plate, give you a chance, and then what you do? You fill it again. Come on. We don't want to die like the thief. We want to be able to maintain, as Abram did, a willing heart to serve, to sacrifice, and to worship because our whole life's journey is in service to God. The second thing, the first one is maintain a willing heart. The second thing, do not fight for what God has promised. Verses 5 to 7, Lot also went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt, then dwelt in the land. So that's the second thing. Do not fight for what God has promised. Where's the relevance of what God has promised here? God had already said to Abram, I will bless you. I will preserve your line, and in you, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Now at this time, God is showing up here. Abram is, Abram is already wealthy, right? So let's describe wealthy. This morning I was listening to the news, I understand somebody or some person, yeah. This one, there was apparently a, 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 a I don't know if they call it lottery over there, I don't know, some kind of lottery ticket in America. And one person called all the numbers for one billion US dollars. One billion US dollars. So I said to Cindy, I say, <laughs> that person could get up and go mad, so you know. Because, <laughs> yeah, understand? So I'm talking wealthy. Abraham was wealthy. He was wealthy. And what we see here is that his wealth did not prevent him from nurturing this one willing heart or his wealth did not cause him to fight for more wealth. You see, brethren, blessings and increase require management. Why do I include increase? Because somewhere in Pentecost, Remember, the bishop reminded us on, that, unfortunately, in Pentecost, it only had two sins, fornication and adultery. And if you're listening home, it's absolutely not true. I'm trying to be, you know, that's the reality. And anything else, it's all right. We blink. You know, we could discover people that lie through their teeth. Lie from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We'll still, you know. Rub shoulders, be cool, no stress at all, no rebuke. But let some poor soul fall into sexual sin. You know? And from that sort of thing, the statement has been made, the church of Jesus Christ is the only army that shoots its wounded. Brethren, what God has given to you, what God has declared, only person who could screw it up is you. And, the, and, and get this, you cannot and will not screw it up by embracing the principles laid down in Scripture. Embrace the principles of Scripture while maintaining, keep that in mind, maintain that heart of service sacrifice and worship before God and God will take you out. You see, sometimes it's hard when, you, when your life, I mean, nobody here has experienced a genuine dungeon. At least I will trust not. But if, I'm, I'm sure there are young people. You see, let me, you see this year, 2021, I'm asking God. In the next meeting after my family meeting, I want to ask for all the young people about praying into it now. Because that's the next set of folk that God wants to get on, his, on their attention. Because we have some young folks here 
They view their lives as dungeons. They didn't tell me that. They feel trapped. They need to discover the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph. They need to discover the God of their parents. Unfortunately, and this is across the board and so many times, we were able to hand down religious practice without religious and spiritual connection. And what we have, and again, as I said, blessings. You see, the, the, the stuff that comes over the airways, if you just listen to it naturally, what you'll find is that blessings will sound like the billion dollars, you know? Money and car and van. I want to do that thing. Blessings and, blessings and car and van and house and land and money and the whole nine yards. And those things are indeed blessings. But I would much rather call them increase so that we could get clear that God has blessed us even without that. Job was very blessed even when he had nothing tangible. He had the presence of God talking with him. Could you be more blessed than that? Could you be more blessed than that? You see, when, when, you're, when, when you're in the valley, you're not personal. When you're in the valley without God, that's when, drama, that's when drama is. When you can't identify his presence. And that's the thing that's driving and breaking some of our young people across this nation. They're testing, as it were, the things that they've been taught. And it's appearing as if God is coming up short. And they're looking for examples in those who taught them. And then a whole set of crisis emerges. You ought to fight for it. Take your life right there in that dungeon. God had declared over Joseph. God had declared over Daniel. And in the den. And in the dungeon. In the hole. In Potiphar's house, then back in the dungeon, right there, God's word that he had declared was still true. And Abram knew this. He had the faith to keep that in his mind. If some of us got more faith in what God has said to us, we would discontinue some of the relationships we have with politicians. Because we want to keep a line. I don't know if it's called it line in Tobago. I lived here for three and a half years. I ain't know. We want to keep a contact. Because you never know. And I grew up as well here in that center. It's not where you know you know. It's who you know. And more importantly, who know you? You ever hear that? I grew up here and my father say that. And every time he said that, sometimes my mother say it too. But thank God my mother also say, your future is in the hands of the living God. Find him. Find him. Find him. And the good or the bad part, when I found him, my tongue got loose. I ain't bad now. You know. I know. And I am persuaded that God will continue to do his sovereign will in my life, live or die, his sovereign will. What a fight. And that's why when this reality, the blessings got so much, it's not just jump and up and down. If we don't manage these blessings, they will cause disruption. They will cause disruption. Right? Blessings and increase come with challenges. We need to learn more things. History has shown right here in Trent Tobago that the first set of lotto winners, every last one of them broken. Some of them in a worse state. Blessings and increase requires management. Gifting requires management. Huh? 
What do you think this, this training on Saturday is about? Because we can't just pray for the every team and say, learn, boom, in Jesus' name. Hmm? You think Curtis could play how we play? Because we prayed for him? Huh? I believe that a certain amount of, what you call it, um, Curtis do agree with me with this, by the way. Um, young Curtis. I believe a certain amount of, what it was, capacity or whatever it is, is transferred in the gene. You know what I said? But your dad is a musician. Yeah? I don't know. But what I also know, what we agree on, if he ain't work hard, he will never get as good. You follow me, I think? What about what God has given you? How hard are you working on it? For his kingdom. Huh? For his kingdom. This morning when Terry called me to say, Pastor, now again, I am on the executive, so I knew. Said, Pastor, for notes told me, the bishop told me yesterday. Right? So when, um, when, when Pastor Terry called me this morning, say, Pastor, I won't be there today. I'm being deployed in, um, I can't remember which one of the two churches. I said, good. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Didn't tell him I knew already. All right? I said, we need to understand what covering is. Right? I didn't just say it, so I said, so what I'm going to do, I'll make sure I remember to tell the assembly, because I want the assembly to understand that you're not just outside there, freely willy on your own. You are covered. All right? Sometimes when you, you, you look at what you have, you just start to wonder who could take it from you. No. No, 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 no. Learn. Give yourself time. You know, there's, now we are among, we are in one of the most accountable ages because we can learn so many things via the internet. Learn money management. Learn to, to, to manage our lives. Learn to manage our diets. Learn to manage our exercise. Learn. All of these things are right there. Once God has declared it, you don't want to fight for it. Continue to give. Give. When I say give, I mean give of your time, your talents, and your treasures. Embracing the principles and God, because God is no man's debtor. Thirdly, choose a higher level of behavior than the world. All right? So the first one, maintain a willing heart to serve, to sacrifice, and to worship. The second one, don't fight for what God has already promised. Manage. Manage your life. All right? And your blessings. Three, choose a higher level of behavior than the world. Verses 8 and 9. Abraham said to Lord, Please, let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole world land before you? Please separate from me. If you take left, then I will go to the right. If you take right, then I'll go to the left. All right? So let me see now if I could play the, 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 the bad kingdom person now. And I'm in Abram's position. And I'm not doing like Abram do. Here what I would then want to tell Lot. Here what's going on. You see the set of fight? God called me out here. You follow me, you know. You follow me. You ain't come out here because God called you. So here what's going on. We are a part company. I will choose first. And what I leave, you take. Because be glad... You come with me this far. That's the way the world would do it. That's the way the world would do it. Because I'll justify it. You know it is? We can justify what we want to know. And we choose the Bible to do it too. And that's what I was trying to do there. Show how I could justify that. Well, you know, God called me. He didn't call you. You following me, brother. All this blessing you get because you're following me. If you was back in early childhood with your father there, my brother, hard luck for you. What you know? You want to play man and tell me you want to choose? Again, Abram understood he did not have to fight for what God already declared. And he understood that he had to choose a higher level of behavior because he was the one who was walking with God. So he said, let there be no strife between us. Why? Because we are brethren. Because of who we are. Because of who we are, brethren, that is what makes the difference. 
because of who we are. We are kingdom people. When I say I'm a kingdom man, it's not just because I get saved. It's because I've taken day after day, sometimes night after night, to put myself before God to say, Lord, break the strength of the flesh in me that I could put your agenda before mine. If my agenda was before God, I'd have called Reverend Robert some of the time. All right, God, all right. Yeah, 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 this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to go. I'd have justified. All right, two elections done pass. All right, I understand. I'm sorry. I go in. I go and apply. And as I become the pastor elect, I, or before I call, let me hear. What? White house. What's the size of the house? How much room? You know? My cow get it. Have a fence? All them kind of drama. God and I just make a little tease. You know, every time God called me out of the island somewhere, that's the only time I'd live without a fence. You know? You could imagine, you could imagine Matthew had to get up tomorrow and live without a fence. Who else has a fence here? I know Matthew has a fence. Oh gosh, I want somebody else. I could use that example. Elder Young has a fence, but he gate always open. <laughs> Aye! Higher level, higher level than the world, higher level than the world. Because we are brethren. That's what determines. You know, you know what Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says? Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. So if even, as I study the word, and I study to become a better Bible teacher, if my motivations are because I, I could get to say I am this great teacher, or people will begin to find that I could really teach them, carnality it don't work if what you want to do for God you're saying you want to do for God and God allowed the devil to turn up the heat then you get to realize nah 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 you see that well Bishop McCall dealt with that kind of thing during the three weeks higher level of behavior because we are brethren because we are kingdom people I not building we not involved as individuals building a kingdom the kingdom of, excuse me, the kingdom of God, randomly, you know. We are part of the kingdom. We are part of the kingdom. Because of whom we are. Kingdom builders. And I listened to God use Bishop Knowles McCall night after night after night, showing us the types of things that will more pull down Maranatha. I'm saying these things must not be listed amongst us. Let nothing be done in selfish ambition or, 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 or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also the interests of others. Thousands of years after Abram, God has the apostle write this to the Philippian church. Somehow Abram was able to know it. Why? Again, kingdom culture. He knew that God had promised him. God had already said, so I don't want to fight for this. He knew, he knew, he knew. The God that preserved him when he was in Egypt, when this pagan king could have interfered with his wife, that he had exposed. The God that kept him was the God that was able to keep him if he himself not choose the best part. So what does he say? Listen, is not the whole land before us? Hear what? Please separate from me. If you take left, then I will go right. If you go right, then I will go left. Hmm? Yeah? Yeah. Simple. Simple. You know, as a pastor, if I didn't have to answer to God for what goes on to Maranatha, in Maranatha, or what we do, or how we live, or how I feed the sheep, or how we keep are nurtured, then my whole tone would be different. But I had to answer to God for it. And sometimes, 
when I want to do like this now and say, all right, if you want to leave, bless you. You know, pastor ain't care. You don't want to stay and follow. You don't want to stay and work with. And I'm just praying for you. No sense trying to argue and discuss and describe and the thing. So I take my time to pray. And God showed up while we're praying and spoke to our hearts. That's what I'm saying. What began on Friday night when, when Reverend McCall gave us a chance to go before God. As he started, I shouldn't say began on Friday night. It began on Wednesday night to give us a chance for us all to get in line. What did I say for us all to get in line? But if even it be that I mean, no, I can't see, I can't use me. I'm use Sylvia. I think the Sylvia ain't want to get in line. Sylvia say, you see me, I preach in too long and I still had to ask for a time. Hard luck. Sylvia, it have a way to do it. You get me? Please, quiet boy. As kingdom people, we must take responsibility to produce an outcome that will advance the kingdom. Advance the kingdom. Advance the kingdom. Hmm? It's public knowledge. It's public knowledge. We say looking to go. We say use your current. Use you. <laughs> It's public knowledge we still live in. She's migrating, right? As a pastor, with her taking point here and teaching these guys and watching these guys respond to her so well with the video thing, eh? the easiest thing for me to do is start to use the scripture to support how my view is, which is validated by what has happened here Look how God using you here. We are going after filthy Luca Paul. What's wrong with you, girl? You're turning your back on God. Look how God bless you. Look at the length of time. You forget when you was crying in the bedroom asking God to get your work. And you come and you get the work. And what you do now? Now we look, you have a good job. You know more people in Tobago want that job. And now you're turning your back. You ain't just turning your back on Tobago. You know you're turning your back on God. I just tease all the time. I say, girl, you know my time will be tempted. Not true. I don't even be tempted. Because I know that this is God's church. And I know that she is as an arrow. And she will fly further. And God will continue to craft and to shape and to train. So that she will become better. What I have told her. As soon as you learn. And you begin to settle down. What? Find a home church. And serve. The kingdom. We take responsibility for the outcome that will advance the kingdom. And we're not no kind of individual independent kind of thing. We're part of local church. That's the biggest. That, that's an additional drama now that COVID-19 has presented for us. Because a long time ago, I stand up easy, easy, turn no camera, no TV, no nothing. I keep saying TV, but you know what I mean, right? Um, and say, all right, do you have a home church? If you don't have a home church, you're welcome. If you have a home church, go back there. But guess what? Our own congregants, not just Maranatha, right? this is happening across the churches. Some folk taking in three and four and five so Sunday services. I wonder, Elder Young, if they learn in three and four and five lessons. You see, if we're not careful, we'll create an entertainment industry with the word too, you know. And we'll sit and tune it in because we want to be entertained. You understand? And that's a dangerous thing. Because then the, the word that becomes, that, that is really there to feed us, will become as entertainment. And we become overly familiar with God. So brethren, find your flock. Stay with your flock. I ain't saying you can't listen to another sermon. I ain't saying you can't tune in another service. But understand where God has called you. And serve. Right? Submit to God. Right? And finally, well, no, not finally. Lord, time done. 
Okay, we won't broke it. We will stop here. Accounting on us, please. Please, please, please. Come back next week. All right, next week, the sermon will be short because I done past half. But when we done past half, next week, and we finish it, we will pray each for the other. Is that all right? Is that all right? Can I really count on you? Really, 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 really. Clear your schedules. Make sure, you know, um, if you already have something that you cannot change, already booked, and I'm referring to folk like Karen who are rostered to work. I ain't talking about if you had planned to go to the beach. All right? All right? Amen? All right. So our time is indeed limited, but our praise is not restricted. Father God, I want to pray. I'm praying for your people even now. Lord God, I thank you for what you're doing. I give you praise. I give you praise for each one of us in this building here, as well as God, those who are at home, those who may be signing in on Facebook and or YouTube. Father God, I give you praise today. And I pray today in the name of Jesus that that which, oh God, we have heard today, that we will ponder your truth, oh God, with your spirit. That we, oh God, would step to where you ordain us to be. God, I pray a special prayer for our young people. I pray, God, Lord, that you would raise up amongst them those who would reach others of their age and their generation. Oh, God, so that the work you have called us to do here, they will rise up and begin to do it also. Father, I thank you for the elders. I thank you for those just after the elders in terms of age, oh, God. I thank you, God, for your people. Bind us together with your Holy Ghost. Continue to craft and to shape us. Continue to clear the way before us, O oh God, that we will go. That we will succeed. That we will become more than we are. Not because we choose, but because that which you have spoken over our lives will come to be in the name of Jesus. We say thank you, dear Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and Amen, 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 amen. So God bless you all so much, brethren. And remember tonight, I'll be, look out for the link. Um, I will give it to Cindy and she will send it. And that way you'll be able to either copy it there or email it to you. Um, and you'll be able to join us tonight. All, let's all be part of this very important prayer meeting as we go to God for these three areas. One, the election tomorrow. Two, protection and guidance in the midst of this era of pandemic and third for the family of the late Bert brother Bert all of a sudden forgot James I knew that you know I don't know why the name that slipped me all right so bless you so much if you can all stand Rhonda glory glory